Hello tankers. Have you had a chance to play the new gravitizing mode? Managed to try it and to be honest I didn't like it. Please share your opinion about this mode in the comments. Would be glad to read it. Also I noticed a lot of activity from you in the comments on my previous video. Many people requested a compilation of the best tanks for beginners and are making this video based on your requests. Had planned to make a video about map positions, but it can wait. Friends, want to remind you that we are very close to the main goal of reaching 3,000 subscribers. This means that soon we'll be hosting a giveaway of several battle passes among the subscribers. All the details will be in one of the upcoming videos, but for now I wish you a pleasant viewing experience. Let's start with something light, and here we have the Japanese Samurai Type 71 tank. In recent updates this tank was nerfed, but even after that it remains enjoyable to play. It has proven itself to be one of the best heavy tanks for both beginners and intermediate or experienced players. Let's take a look at its research tree, starting from tier 6 with a tank called Junu. To focus more attention on the interesting vehicles, I'll give a brief overview. The tank doesn't stand out. It's a completely standard tank for tier 6 with a single shot damage of 220 units. The armor is capable of withstanding tanks of tier 5 or 6, but if you find yourself in a battle against tier 7 tanks, you'll quickly realize that you lack armor. So, gritting your teeth, move on and here we have a tank called Juto. This tank plays as it sounds, it's incredibly huge. The Japanese hadn't yet realized that they needed to make more rounded tanks for better armor, and they followed the principle of bigger means better. However, this approach didn't help Juto much. Of course, it can tank something, but when you remember the tanks at tier 7, you understand that Juto is not capable of being a competitor. And so we move on. The tier 8 tank called Chisei can surprise us with excellent characteristics. Great armor, decent damage per minute, and pleasant gun depression angles. Overall, the tank is quite similar to the German Tiger, which we know is one of the best at its tier. The gameplay is also similar to the Tigers. You need to play from the diamond, as the hull allows you to expose even the upper armor plate, and that's worth a lot. In general, the tank is very enjoyable, and you won't have any problems progressing with it. As for the tier 9 tank, the Japanese finally realized that tanks with a rounded shape are needed, and the Type 68 is a testament to that. What do we get in the top configuration? At the very least, an excellent gun similar to the T110E5, which means that even when playing against tier 10 tanks, you won't have problems penetrating them. Thanks to the rounded turret, you'll be able to easily play with the relief of the maps. The tank also has decent maneuverability and dynamics, but nothing more. It's a standard tank for tier 9, not bad, but not super good. And now we move on to the crown of the tree. Type 71, a random battle beast, all thanks to its armor. It's nearly impossible to hit the weak spots, especially during a fast-paced battle where everyone is moving back and forth. However, if you come across an experienced player in a tank destroyer, they might be able to penetrate your hull effortlessly. But such situations are not common. Medium and light tanks with penetration at around 250mm won't be able to penetrate you. And there are even instances where you manage to bounce an entire drum from a T-57 Heavy, which is also not uncommon. Yes, the armor is great, but what about its mobility? Well, the tank excels in this area too. I often encounter situations where medium tanks struggle to get away from the Type 71. With its excellent armor, it becomes a killer for all light and medium tanks. You might think that since the tank has both armor and mobility, its gun must be mediocre. While it doesn't have the high damage output of a heavy tank, dealing only 400 damage per shot, the gun is comfortable to use with good accuracy and penetration. Thanks to the new equipment, you also get a 9 degree gun depression. This tank is an excellent top tier choice for beginners, just like any other tank in this video. So let's move on and not waste your precious time. The second place goes to another heavy tank, the Polish 60TP Lewandowski Go. It's beloved by many skilled players and is an ideal tank for beginners. Let's briefly go through its research tree. It starts at tier 6 with the 40TP Habicha. As usual, Tanks at lower tiers are not that interesting, so only say a few words about them to save time. At tier 6, you get mediocre armor, a gun with 225 damage per shot, and no notable mobility. Let's move on. At tier 7, we have the 45 TP Habicha, which is also not very exciting. The armor is slightly better, but still insignificant against other tanks at this tier. The gun deals 290 damage per shot, which is quite respectable but then we remember the Smasher with its 640 damage per shot, so let's continue. 
At Tier 8, we encounter an interesting tank called 53 TP Markowski Ego. You might ask, what makes this tank so interesting? 420 damage per shot. But that's not all. The tank boasts excellent hull armor and an impenetrable turret. I also forgot to mention the additional consumables that allow you to deal more damage per shot. In terms of mobility, this tank is not outstanding like all the tanks in this line. Apologies for the spoiler. At Tier 9, we have the 50 TP Tuskiewicza. While it has undergone significant visual changes, its gameplay is still similar to its predecessor. It features the same excellent hull and turret armor, as well as its infamous sluggish mobility. However, the gun has improved, dealing 460 damage per shot and having 250 millimeters of penetration, which is quite impressive at Tier 9. Don't forget to use the additional consumables and reach Tier 10. At Tier 10, we have the 60 TP Lewandowski Go. This tank has an alternative branch leading to the E100, which is also suitable for beginners, but we'll talk about that in future videos. For now, let me tell you about the 60 TP. I should warn you right away that tanks in this line have a weak ammo rack and it explodes quite frequently. Therefore, durability equipment and modules are your best friends when playing this line of tanks. The 60 TP has a pleasant gun dealing 600 damage, and with the additional consumables you can dish out around 700 damage per shot. Due to its long and large gun, you can cover enemy guns in close quarters combat, which demonstrate in other videos as I don't have this tank on my account at the moment. The armor is also a strong point of this tank, with a nearly invincible turret and hull. There's a small strip on the lower part of the hull, but it's challenging to hit during battle. The mobility of the tank is standard for a heavy tank, and you'll be moving at a speed similar to the E100. For beginners, I see this as a plus, because you won't rush into the battle and die early on. So go ahead and grind this tank if you like slow and well-armoured alpha tanks. If not, continue watching the video, and you'll surely find a tank that suits your taste. The next tank will be the M6 Yo, which will be quite strong in dealing high damage and very toxic. With this tank you can inflict nearly a thousand damage per second. The research tree for this tank starts at tier 6 with a tank called M6. It's a powerful, sturdy and fast tank that allows you to tank, dominate and win. However, we won't dwell on this tank for long as it's already well known, and I won't share anything new about it. At tier 7 we have the M7 Yo, which is neither fish nor fowl. This tank can be called a big head since its engine is located in the turret. If someone shoots the rear of your turret, they will likely damage the engine or even set you on fire. There's not much to say about this tank. While it has a gun similar to the T-29, the T-29 not only has an impenetrable turret, but also pleasant gun depression angles. Unfortunately, the M7 Yo lacks these advantages. Its damage per minute barely reaches 2000, with a gun depression of only minus 7 degrees, and it lacks proper armor and mobility. So, gritting your teeth, move on to Tier 8, where things improve significantly. The M3 Yo is a very pleasant tank. Not only does it have improved accuracy, allowing you to confidently fire all rounds from the drum, but it also has a drum with three shells, each dealing 310 damage and a reload time of 2.7 seconds per shell. As for armor, well, it's still absent. While the tank can bounce shots off its turret, strongly advise against exposing your hull to the enemy. Playing with the relief is enjoyable because we have a well-armored turret, decent vertical gun angles of minus eight degrees, and good penetration of 236 millimeters on calibrated shells. This is one of the highest penetrations at tier eight among heavy tanks. However, there are no other notable features to mention about this tank. So let's move on to tier nine and the M5 Yo, which consider one of the best tanks in this branch. Of course, the top tier tank will be better in every aspect, but from this tank onward, we have access to interesting mechanics. The first one is the emergency repair kit, which allows you to slowly reverse even if your tracks are damaged. The second feature of this tank lies in its top gun, which has a two shell drum, each shell dealing 450 damage with an intra-drum reload time of 1.7 seconds. Of course, the drum reload time is almost 26 seconds, which is quite long in our random battles. However, you can quickly peek out, deal a whopping 900 damage in almost two seconds and retreat. Additionally, its armor, despite poor numerical values, allows you to bounce shots quite often thanks to the shape of the hull and turret. And don't forget about the additional consumables, which improve your accuracy and allow you to deliver two shots precisely before retreating without taking damage. We get roughly the same features at tier 10, including the same emergency repair kit mechanic and the same toxic gun. 
overall it's the same but better in terms of characteristics. However, the tank becomes wider, making it easier to penetrate. In this case, Tier 9 would have been a better choice than Tier 10. As for the gun, we still have a two-shell drum with 450 damage per shell, but the reload time has become much faster, resulting in a damage per minute of around 2,500 units. Considering that we have a drum, this is quite good. However, the tank also has a second alternative gun with a three-shell drum, and each shell deals 310 damage. This gun is more suitable for tournaments and I don't recommend playing with it, especially if you're a beginner. We've talked quite a bit about heavy tanks, so let's take a look at tank destroyers instead. In my opinion, the best choice for beginners right now would be the Jagdpanzer E100. The tech tree starts with the Jagdpanzer, a tier six tank destroyer. Its main feature is its top armament. It doesn't have high penetration or damage. It only deals 220 damage per shot. However, it has an insane reload speed, allowing for a whopping 3000 damage per minute at tier six. It's worth noting that beginners will only be able to realize this damage potential from bushes, since the tank doesn't have exceptional armor or mobility. At tier seven, we get the Jagged Panther, which has some armor, particularly angled armor. By hiding the lower frontal plate, you can confidently bounce shots even from heavy tanks. Additionally, the tank has improved maneuverability and an alternative gun with 310 damage and higher penetration. Overall, I recommend playing with this gun. Moving on, we have the Jagged Panther 2. This is one of the best tier eight tank destroyers because it already has a tier 10 gun with 460 damage per shot, excellent penetration of 250 millimeters and a fast reload. This results in a comfortable 3000 damage per minute. Moreover, the tank has exceptional frontal turret armor, making it practically impenetrable. However, the hull is easily penetrable even by tier seven tanks. It also boasts excellent mobility, allowing it to zip around the map at medium tank speeds. This cannot be said for the next tank in this line, the Jagged Tiger, which only has decent mobility. However, it compensates with incredible armor for both the turret and the hull. In addition, the tank's gun has one of the highest damage per minute values in the game, dealing a whopping 4,000 damage with each shot being 460. This eyes a tank destroyer that can hold an entire flank on its own, especially if you play from the turret position. Let's not waste any more time and move on to the top tank in this line. The Jagdpanzer E100 has one of the most powerful guns in the game, dealing 800 damage with armor piercing rounds and 1,200 damage with HE rounds. While the fv 215 b has higher damage, the Jagdpanzer E100 has far superior armor, which is not just talk, but is actually proven in battles. You will frequently bounce shots, even with premium ammunition. The rear mounted turret allows for easy retreat and dealing damage without trading your hit points. You should play this tank on the front line, but always make sure you have allies nearby. If you're left alone, even some heavy tanks can overwhelm you, not to mention medium and light tanks. Finally, at the end of the video, I want to recommend the medium tank line led by the Progetto 65. It may not seem like an obvious choice for beginners, but there's something to talk about here. The Progetto 65 line starts at tier six with the P-43 Beers, a very standard tank that doesn't require much discussion. The same goes for the next tank, the P-43 Ter. Both of these tanks are not particularly enjoyable to play. However, at tier eight, you'll encounter the excellent P-44 Panther. Finally, on this tank, we get the auto reloading mechanism with a three shell drum, each dealing 225 damage. It also has decent penetration of 213 millimeters for a medium tank. The shells reload quite quickly, but the intra drum reload time is a negative aspect, taking a whole three seconds. If you consider that there's a premium alternative, the Progetto 46 on the same tier, which is essentially the same tank, but stronger, with a reload time of 2.5 seconds and damage per shot of 240. It's recommended to play with the Progetto 46 if you have it. However, if you don't have the Progetto 46, you can still progress through the P-44 Panther and play with it. Either way, this line is quite comfortable to go through. Moving on, we reach tier nine where we find the standard B. It already has an increased damage per shot of 350, as well as the auto reloading mechanism. Additionally, it boasts excellent gun depression angles of minus 10 degrees, great penetration, decent mobility, and a unique feature. Increased penetration on standard HE shells a whopping 105 millimeters. This allows us to penetrate the frontal armor of most medium tanks and the sides of heavy tanks. However, on the top tier tank in this line, the Progetto 65, 
These HE shells are unfortunately absent. It could have been an interesting feature. Otherwise, the tank is very similar to its predecessor, with the same three-shell drum gun dealing 350 damage per shot and featuring the auto-reloading mechanism. However, this tank has rather unusual armor. There is no armor in the turret or the hull by default. However, by installing enhanced armor equipment, the upper part of the hull becomes highly resistant to most tier 10 tanks, except for heavy caliber tank destroyers. As for mobility, it's average. It's there, but you don't really feel it. So why did place this line for beginners? It's because beginners will find it easy to grasp the auto-reloading mechanism, but playing with cyclic tanks is not particularly interesting as they require more skill. Thank you for watching the video until the end. See you in the next video, goodbye.